Hi there, let's take a look at your submission for the Chapter 5 Problem Solve. You can see on the screen I have the results from the My IT Lab system, and I'm just going to go through step by step to see what the system didn't like about the way you constructed the work. So let's start with, oh, actually for step 2, I have that already done in a different video. So I'll send the link for that video and you can walk through adding the names. I see you manually added the names and what the system wants is for you to use the current selection command <laughs> to add the names. So I'll show you how to do that in a different video. Let's move down to step four. Um, in step four, uh, we're asked to add the VLOOKUP function. And I'm going to click the down arrow to see exactly what it didn't like about your VLOOKUP. So, um, we're using D14, the name category, and all of this happens in cell E14. So I'm going to click on your E14, um, and you have your V lookup. Yep, we're comparing. Yep. Oh, I see. Do you see the difference here? So you've used the name size, and in the V lookup, we want to use the actual cell address. So instead of pointing to the size column, actually either way works, but what the system wants to see is it sees that it wants to see that you're pointing to cell D14. So I'm going to go back here to, um, to the worksheet. I'm going to click on E14. I'm going to replace the name size and just use the cell address D14. Once you have that one corrected, then make sure that you, um, autofill it down the entire column because the system will randomly check other cells in this column to see that they're using the cell address um, within that VLOOKUP function. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another one. Step 5. In 014, you're using the HLOOKUP. Hmm, I suspect I know what the trouble is. Let's, let's first take a look at how the system wants this HLOOKUP. Yep, and see they're using the cell address. Okay, let's go take a look at your cell O14. Um, one more. There it is. Okay, H lookup. Yep, same thing. So you've used the name and what they want is the cell address. And so right in the real world, uh, um, you, you could use it this way. It gives the proper result. But, um, so, but I don't want you to be too upset about how the scoring results happen. It's good to rework this because now you know you can use the name or the cell address, right? So I'm going to use, what is that, C14 instead of the name distance so that we can use either. And in this case, right, we're also, it gives us the chance to remember why we would use a relative reference versus an absolute reference. So this is a really good thing. And it's also kind of nice because in the real world, we sometimes have that boss who wants it done their way, right? We do it one way, think it's super cool. And then the boss is like, no, no. So it's, it's not bad to understand the multiple ways that we can accomplish these tasks in Excel. Okay. So make that correction. Again, I just replaced the name distance with the actual cell address, which was C14 and then autofill it down the column. All right, let's keep going. Um, your next one is copy the formulas without filling the format. Hmm, all right, and I see it all filled in the background, so, and, so let's see what it didn't like. It took off a half a point. In the cell 054, the VLOOKUP, oh, all right, so this one actually, this will be corrected when you make that last correction that you did. So you, we just got done changing distance to the C column to C14. And when you autofill that down, it'll correct this as well. So, so this one will be good. Two birds with one stone. That's always nice. Um, okay. Step 11. In C2, use the count ifs function to count the number. All right. Let's go ahead and just looking. Yep. Um, let's take a look there at C2. Okay. And count, yep, so you're counting the number of occurrences in the cost. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're counting the number of occurrences in the state column where it matches KS for Kansas um, and where the cost is. Um, let me go back. Did I look to see what it wanted? Hmm, I'm wondering why. Oh, gee, it didn't give you any points for this one. What didn't it like about it? Count. Oh, all right. I see. So in your function, you said greater, ah, uh-huh. So you said greater than three. This is why it didn't give you um, 
any points for this at all. And what and the difference is here, it's having you use count ifs for where the cost is four plus count ifs where the cost is five, right? Four and five are greater than three. Um, so we'll end up seeing the same result, but it wants an entirely different way of constructing this function. So let's walk through that together. Okay, so I'm going to click on cell C2, and I'm just going to start straight from the beginning. So equals count ifs, and we want plural because we're going to do more than one, and we are going to count, um, we are going to count where the cost, so we're going to use the name cost, I'm going to start typing that in, there it is, I'll select that, where the cost is four, so I do comma four, right, because it's my criteria range needs to find this criteria, so cost comma four, um, comma state, so I'll type in that name and select, oops, spelled it wrong, state, there it is, double click, select that name, comma, where the state is equal to KS, because we're counting only the Kansas ones. All right, so that's one of the count ifs. Then we're going to say plus and do that all over again, count ifs where cost, T, comma, five, comma, state, comma, KS. So where the cost is a five and where the state is Kansas, it's going to count all of those occurrences. All right, I'm going to wrap up that parentheses for that count ifs function. Cross your fingers, press enter, yep. And do you see we actually get the same result? It's the same thing as we've run into before. It just wants it done that way. And again, it's a good thing to know there are different ways to achieve this same result. Okay, let's move on. I'm seeing a pattern <laughs> in how the My IT Lab system is grading your work. It wants it done its way. All right, let's go over to cell H2 and use the average ifs. And I'm going to take a guess as to why it doesn't like it. Um, Average ifs, yep, the cost, yep, COA versus Kansas, where the cost is five. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at yours, H2. Hmm, where well, the cost is five and the state is Kansas, right? Isn't that what we're doing? Um, in cell H2, the formula was not set to average ifs. State is Kansas, cost is five. What didn't it like about this? Average ifs. Oh, is it the name? Yeah, how much you want to bet? See, the name here is um, R-E-S, lowercase. And when you've named this, um, okay, so I'm going to just move away from this cell for a minute and look at the name. Um, where are you? Yeah, so, um, and, so the name of this range is R-E-S capitalized. And in fact, the name name, if we take it from the cell, or sorry, from the column heading here is RES lowercase. And so when you correct using the other video where I show you how to use current selection to add the names, oh, fiddlesticks, you're still going to have to correct it here. All right, so <laughs> let me think about how to do this. Um, I'm going to add a name. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add this name under formulas define name, and I'm going to call it R-E-S with lowercase, C-O-A, because that's an acronym, and it's going to be applied to here, and the, it's going to refer to this whole column. Um, okay, so I'm adding this name just as a workaround. Oh, the name already exists. Oh, it doesn't like it. Hmm, did I miss it? Name manager. What do we got here? R-E-S. Oh, of course. So here's what here's what I want you to do. <laughs> We're working through this. I want you to click on the formulas tab, the name manager command, and you're going to click on RESCOA. Where are you? Here, RESCOA. And you're going to choose edit. And you're going to make R -E the ES lowercase. And click OK. And click close. Now we get to fix H2. There it is. See? R-E-S-C-O-A. So I'm taking a guess that that's what it doesn't like because that's the only thing that I can see is different um, 
Here it is. I don't see anything else. You've used the names um, like you were supposed to. I'm just doing this for a visual matchup. Use the name. State cost is five. I don't see anything else that would throw this off. And I'll admit that um, sometimes I get a little superstitious with my IT lab, right? Because it's so picky. So I don't know if you want to switch. Do you see how you have cost first and then state? And it has state first and then cost? I don't know. If you want to switch that around, it might not be a bad idea. Just to see if you can get the points there. Fix that. If you don't get any, if you don't get full points for that step, then just email me back and I can, I can get the points. All right, step 15. We're getting close to almost done. In cell M2, use the sum ifs function. Okay, let's go take a look at your M2. Wait. Oh, all right. You maybe just missed this step. So in M2, just add the sum ifs. I know you can do it. You've done, it's the same as count ifs, average ifs. You've got that one. Just add that in. You must have accidentally missed it. Um, and what else have we got? Step 19. In L9, use the max function for the points column. What doesn't it like? Um, sorry, I gotta scroll up a little bit. It was not set to max points. All right, I'm gonna take a look at your L9. Uh, oops, sorry, up here. L9, there it is. Oh, all right, so in this case, you used the cell addresses and it wanted the name. <laughs> so, I know, so picky. Just convert that to the name. There it is. All right, moving on. At least it's an easy fix, right? Um, step 20, in L10, use index or match. And I'm just gonna take a look, what didn't it like about it? Um, index, name, match, L9 points. All right, let's take a look at what you got here. Index, name, match, L9. Ah, you see that? Yep, you use the cell addresses again instead of the name. Both return the same results, we're just satisfying the system. All right, so I'm gonna convert that and it returns the exact same results. Yeah, so you've got this. I think that was the last one. Is that the last one? Um, yeah, that's step 20. Make all of those corrections, submit it again. Um, let me know if you have any trouble after that at all, but I think you should be on target for 100%. I'll, I'll cross my fingers for you. Email me if you have any questions.